I'm the genius Asian. Welcome to the genius family. Today I am going to show you how to recover a car battery and how you may destroy the battery if it is not treated properly. During the pandemic, you may have a car or cars you have not driven for quite some time. You go to start the car after a few months and find your car battery is dead. Whenever the battery is not fully charged, you will have sulfation, and if not remedied, you will have irreversible damage. The longer the battery is not fully charged, the harder it will be to revive it. Driving your car or charging the car battery so that it is fully charged is the only way to avoid sulfation. I hooked up a smart battery charger to our car battery. This kind of charger may take days or weeks to fully charge the battery because it is mostly intended for maintenance recharge when your battery is not completely discharged. That means that the internal resistance is not very high. I can also use this ordinary charger because a completely discharged battery's internal resistance is quite high. There are three ways to counteract this. I can, one, use a higher voltage, two, use lower voltage and wait a long time, three, add chemicals to lower the resistance. This charger has two voltage settings, 2 amp or 6 amp. When I use the 6 amp, the voltage is higher. If you use higher voltage, the 6 amp, you may hear a loud bubbling sound. Some battery cells will be heated up hot and they will lose water. I found that after two days of charging with 6 amps, the voltage dropped quite low after the charger was disconnected. It was overcharged. At this time, I used a hydrometer to test the specific gravity for the acid of the battery. This cell looks perfect. The indicator is in the green area. However, the specific gravity for this other cell is too light. It is in the red area. In fact, two of the six cells in the battery are bad. And since the six cells are connected in the series, the overall voltage cannot reach the 12 volts it needs. As a result of this overcharging, we will need to replace the battery. To avoid overcharging, the charging period should be short and the battery should not be allowed to get too hot. I could use the 2 amp setting to slow charge the battery. This reduces drastically the chance of overcharging, but the main problem with this is that it may take a very long time if sulfation in the battery cells is very bad. Finally, some people suggest adding Epsom salt, mixing it with distilled water and adding to the cells. Although some people swear that Epsom salt works, Epsom salt does not particularly help to reduce sulfation. It is possible the Epsom salt can reduce the internal resistance and enable a higher current during charging, thus leading to the false impression that it works to reduce sulfation. Please see the end of this video for an experiment. My recommendation is to use the high voltage briefly to start, make sure it doesn't heat very hot, and then switch to a low current to charge for a longer time. If you don't have a charger that can overcome the battery's resistance, you may as well try up some salt if you happen to have it on hand. At least it can't hurt. To know how old your car battery is, look at the label. For example, this one says 200214D. It indicates the date the battery was manufactured. The digit 4 it means 2014, and the letter D means April, the fourth month. This will save you the time and trouble of trying to revive a battery that is simply too old to last any longer. To prolong the lifespan of a battery, you should either drive the car periodically or use a charger to charge it to avoid sulfation. Make sure you don't overcharge it, as we have shown here. I usually use a smart charger to do maintenance charging so that I don't end up in a situation where I may overcharge it. Another tip is to add distilled water when the battery fluid drops below the indicated low mark. When the electrolyte level drops below the tops of the plates, Oxygen in the air causes a chemical reaction that damages the exposed portion of the plates. Take this example. You see this oxidation on the terminal because it was exposed. I've cleaned it very well. I've used sandpaper to clean this lead pole. It looks very clean and quite smooth. I connect the battery charger to this battery. The battery supply voltage is over 13 volts. Note that I first measure between the two clamps. It is over 13 volts. But when I measure the voltage between the two lead poles, it has only 11.4 volts. It should be over 13 volts. If you keep charging the battery like this, it will not work. If I measure the resistance between two points on the surface of a single pole, 
it has 1500 ohm. This high resistance reduces the current to a few milliamps, too little to start the car, or it may take a thousand days to charge the battery. You look at the lead pole. It is quite smooth, except the color is very black. The black layer is so thick that the sandpaper is no longer effective. I use a screwdriver to scrape. See? You remove the black layer and expose the shining metal color. Let's measure. It is 24 ohm. Much better. Let's clean more and measure. It is a perfect 0 0.1 ohm. Let's measure the voltage between two poles. It is over 13 volts. Now you can really charge the battery. Imagine when the liquid drops and exposes the plates, the black layer will increase the re internal resistance and degrade performance. Let's do a simple experiment to see what happens when you add Epsom salt. I pour some distilled water into a bottle cap. To measure the conductivity, the resistance, of the distilled water, I make a sensor. I use a rubber band to attach two electrodes on opposite sides of this squared stick. In this case, it actually happens to be a pen. I set the multimeter to resistance setting and connect the multimeter to the two electrodes. When I dip the sensor in the distilled water, it shows 100,000 ohms. I will add some Epsom salt to the distilled water. See, the distilled water changed from 100,000 ohms to below 50,000 ohms immediately. If you pour this kind of liquid to the battery, it will increase the ions in the battery, thus decreasing the internal resistance. This may explain why adding Epsom salt works for some people, because those people were not able to increase the voltage of the charger to overcome the resistance. I would prefer to increase the voltage of the charger rather than adding something not recommended by the manufacturer. However, if you can prove that Epsom salt can reduce the sulfation, then please leave your exact chemical equation in the comment section below. If you think Epsom salt can have some reaction with the sediment at the bottom of the battery, please give your chemical equation as well. Share this with people who you know that need it. Leave your own genius tips in the comment section below. Don't forget, I'm the genius Asian. Subscribe for more useful videos.